Charles Walton was a 74-year-old agricultural labourer who resided in the sleepy village of Lower Quinton, Warwickshire, England. Charles had lived there for his entire life and was a well-liked member of the tight-knit community with no known enemies. He was a bit of a recluse but had a quirky and eccentric character and interestingly, according to rumours, Charles had a talent for communicating with animals, having worked as a horse trainer in his youth. For example, it was said that birds would eat from the palms of his hands and he could soothe the tempers of horses and wild rabid dogs by using just his voice. Despite suffering from health problems such as rheumatism, he continued working on several farms as often as he could. In 1945, he was living at a rented, half-timbered cottage located opposite the village church with his niece and housekeeper, 33-year-old Edith Isabel Walton, known as Edie, who he had adopted at age three, following the death of her mother. Edie's father, however, was still alive and residing in Stratford. On Valentine's Day 1945, Charles Walton left his home at 15 Lower Quinton, travelling by foot to the farm of Alfred Potter. He had worked on Potter's farm for nine months at this point, and the farm itself was known locally as the Furs. Charles took with him a fruitcake for his lunch, a slash hook and a pitchfork, both tools used to trim hedges. It was later confirmed by witnesses that Charles had departed for the furs at approximately 9am. At 6pm that evening, Edie returned to the cottage having spent the day working at the Royal Society of Arts as a printer assembler. She was puzzled to discover that the property was empty and that there was no sign of Charles, who would normally have finished his duties by 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Concerned, she enlisted the help of her neighbour, Harry Beasley, and the pair made their way up to the farm. En route, they bumped into Alfred Potter, who reassured them that he had seen Charles working on trimming hedges up at the Furs, at a location named Meon Hill, the furthest of the Cotswolds Mounds, which has many tales of phantom hunters and hounds. After checking the hedged area of hill ground on the slopes of Meon Hill, the trio made a grisly discovery. In a ditch by the hedges, Charles Walton lay deceased. His pitchfork, which had a broken handle, had been pierced through his neck, pinning him to the ground, and blood had seeped into the grass. His throat had been slit by the slash hook, and it was apparent that he had been viciously beaten around the head with his walking stick. Even more horrifying was that a crucifix had been carved into the skin on his chest. The only item noted as missing was a watch belonging to the victim, however it was not of any significant value. Edith was distraught and Beasley comforted her while Potter stood over the scene. Police were contacted and an investigation immediately began. A post-mortem examination found that Charles's trachea had been sliced and he had extensive bruising on his chest and suffered broken ribs. Defensive wounds were also noted, including a cut on his left hand and bruises on the back of his right hand and forearm. The injuries were concluded to have been inflicted by the pitchfork and slash hook. Hair and blood was found on the walking stick and the time of death was recorded as being between 1pm and 2pm on the 14th of February. His shirt had been unbuttoned as was his trousers and oddly enough there was nothing written about the carved cross on his chest in the post-mortem. It was discovered by the local superintendent, Alex Spooner, that this was not the first time that a person in the area was murdered in such a brutal way with a pitchfork. 
In 1875, at nearby Long Compton, a woman named Anne Tennant had been killed in a strikingly similar manner. Her body had been pinned to the ground with a pitchfork and a crucifix had been etched onto her chest. Her killer was a man named John Hayward, who told authorities that he believed her to have been a witch, who had cursed him and the other villagers. Later, it was discovered that the methods used in these ritual-type killings was a traditional Anglo-Saxon method of disposing of witches. Hayward was sent to live out the rest of his days in an asylum for the criminally insane. In 1885, a young ploughboy reported several sightings of a ghostly black dog, nine days in succession in the same place. An investigator in the Walton murder case, Robert Fabian, later claimed to have also seen this dog with his own eyes near Meon Hill at dusk. It had run past him and a little boy appeared but had not seen the animal. The large black dog was reportedly found the next day, hanging from a tree in the vicinity of where Walton's body was found, however this was never officially confirmed. The ploughboy from Alveston also allegedly saw an apparition of a headless woman, which coincidentally matched up to the timeline of when his own sister passed away. There were even whispers around the village suggesting that the young boy was related to Anne Tennant. Nine years later, the unverified connection was found out to be that Anne was his great-grandmother. The boy's name was Charles Walton. Alex Spooner also found that Meon Hill, the place where Charles Walton's body was found, was shrouded in mystery. Tales of dark magic and witchcraft only grew speculation that Walton's death had something to do with the occult. Authorities were not too keen on following up the witchcraft theory and believed that the pensioner had been slain in a random attack by a stranger or person known to him. The crime scene was examined numerous times, however, the silver watch that had disappeared was not yet recovered. Police interviewed over 500 people, yet couldn't find any clues to suggest who had taken Charles's life and why. Delving deeper into Charles's life, it was brought to light that he had moved to the house during World War I, and in 1927 his wealth was at its peak, after the death of his wife. Up until his own death, his savings had rapidly depleted, yet it could not be explained as to why he had lost so much money during this time. Interviews with various other dwellers in Lower Quinton once again brought life to the rumour mill that he had been practising witchcraft. Apparently, an unidentified man was seen aimlessly wandering the hills in the middle of the night, who many suspected to be Walton. He was said to carry out rituals to hex and blight the land. Some people actually blamed Charles for a crop failure in 1944, and apparently, having kept natterjack toads as pets, they all appeared one day in several local areas, leading people to believe a hex had been carried out. More black dog sightings were reported and, curiously, Charles had been killed during the pagan festival of Imbulg, supposedly the best day for a blood sacrifice, the blood used to replenish the earth. A letter was posted to Warwickshire Police, written by a Mrs Jones. The author claimed that she was a witch and the wife of famous occult leader Alistair Crowley. She named her coven as those responsible for carrying out the blood sacrifice on Charles, however, once again, police dispelled this letter as being a hoax, believing witches had nothing to do with the death of Charles Walton. The cloud of suspicion fell upon the last man to have witnessed Charles on the day of his death, which was 40-year-old Alfred Potter, sometimes referred to in the media as Albert Potter, who conveniently left the crime scene just as Warwickshire police arrived. His statements to authorities were contradictory. Initially, he stated that he had been at a field called Cax Lays, went home at 12.30pm, read the newspaper for five minutes, his wife informed him that lunch would be ready shortly, 
Then he went to the aid of one of his workers, Charles Batchelor, known as Happy, to pulp some mangolds at 12.40pm. The pair had both read 1pm on the church clock and Alfred returned home at 5 minutes past 1. In a second interview, he said that he had left the college arms in the village and walked through Cax Lees. He reached the field at around 12.20pm and Alfred stated that he last saw who he believed to have been Charles some distance away wearing a sleeved shirt, yet the victim was found wearing a sleeveless shirt and jacket. Alfred claimed that he would have spoken to Charles had he not realised a heifer needed attention, having been stuck in a ditch. He allegedly darted home, read the newspaper for five minutes and returned to the stranded cow at 12.40pm. This story was corroborated by Mrs Potter, yet the heifer was found to have drowned in Doomsday Ditch on the 13th of February. Alfred said that his fingerprints had been left on the murder weapon as he had apparently inspected the scene for himself before authorities were contacted. He said Harry Beasley had asked for him to check and make sure he is gone. However, Beasley denied that he'd said anything of the sort, as to him it was obvious that Charles was no longer alive. Potter's fingerprints were not actually found on the pitchfork, however, as it appeared that any trace of fingerprints had been carefully wiped from it. Describing the timeline of what happened that day didn't quite match, and the money he had paid Walton also was not consistent with the facts. However, despite all of this, authorities could not find a motive as to why Alfred Potter would murder Charles Walton. There was a possibility that there had been a dispute over money, as Alfred had borrowed some from Charles, however it was merely a rumour that police couldn't find any concrete evidence of. Many people believe Alfred Potter was the man responsible, yet he was neither arrested nor charged. Another theory was that Charles became a victim of a bloodthirsty fugitive. Located near to Lower Quinton was a camp which was full of Italian prisoners of war. Camp rules were rather lenient, so many were permitted to walk freely and unsupervised around the villages, including the farms. It was possible that one of the prisoners had slain Charles, but this theory was soon discarded due to lack of motive and evidence of such an event taking place. An Italian prisoner had been questioned after being found in a ditch with blood on his hands, however it had been a misunderstanding, as the prisoner had been hunting rabbits, something which he regularly did. George Higgins, a friend of Walton's, had an explosive argument with him a few days prior to his death, yet he was not considered a suspect due to his old age and frailty. It wasn't until 1960 when there was a small breakthrough in the case. A worker in the process of demolishing an outhouse located behind the Walton's home discovered Charles's missing watch. It was unknown as to how the watch got there and why it was there. Adding more fuel to the fire, a tiny piece of coloured glass was found within the watch, yet another sign of witchcraft, warding off evil spirits. Scotland Yard detective Robert Fabian, who was heavily involved in this case and called Meehan Hill a bleak and lonely place, ominously wrote in his book The Anatomy of Crime, I advise anybody who is tempted at any time to venture into black magic, witchcraft, shamanism, call it what you will, to remember Charles Walton and to think of his death, which was clearly the ghastly climax of a pagan rite. There is no stronger argument for keeping as far away as possible from the villains with their swords, incense and mumbo jumbo. It is prudence on which your future peace of mind and even your life could depend. The official cause of death was stated as murder by person or persons unknown and he was buried in a churchyard in Lower Quinton. His grave, however, is no longer traceable as the churchyard was re-landscaped. Charles Walton's death has left investigators puzzled for over seven decades and the trail has gone cold, despite rumours that locals knew the identity of the perpetrator. 
Whether Charles was killed by someone known to him or not is unknown, as are the reasons as to why his life ended in such a barbaric way. The facts have almost been lost between the stories of black magic, druid rituals and witchcraft in an area rich with folklore, myths and legends. All that remains is speculation and unanswered questions, and the chilling murder of Charles Walton on St Valentine's Eve in 1945 remains unsolved. <laughs>